Uh, good evening, everyone. You're listening to As of Internet Radio, in which you will be able to listen to the latest news and interviews with various interesting people. Today, we are having a live discussion with Aris, the autonomous right-wing activist from G Greece, who will talk about Golden Dawn and the current situation in uh, Europe. Uh, hello, Aris. How are you? Hello. Um, I'm fine. Just uh, I want to make a correction. I don't consider myself as a let's say, uh, right-wing. I'm a, a form of a, a radical uh, national revolutionist and a national socialist. Okay, so fair enough. Are, are my uh, political and philosophical uh, uh, views. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, I invite our guests to participate in the interview. You may ask uh, your questions in the chat of Azov Internet Radio, and I will talk about the most uh, interesting uh, questions online. Um, okay, Aris, uh, can you uh, first uh, clear the minds of some of our international listeners or uh, non-Greek listeners? What exactly is Golden Dawn in Greece? Golden Dawn started uh, um, in the beginning of uh, in 1980 as a national socialist uh, political organization um, and uh, through the years it started you know to change uh, its uh, political character uh, in the 90s it uh, became uh, uh, let's say a nationalistic organization previously it was uh, in immediate uh, social nationalistic today i can say is a is a mixture uh, a political mixture of uh, extreme right, of uh, um, form of uh, neoconservative ideas, and uh, of uh, form of uh, uh, um, Zionist uh, Bolshevism. Okay. Okay. So, what about the people in Greece? Uh, do the Greek people do they support right-wing organizations, parties, or are they mostly liberals? Uh, the people, I, I think, are mostly uh, uh, liberals or uh, uh, left-wing uh, people, social democrats. So it's uh, kind of difficult for uh, right-wing radicals to gain any support in Greece, is that right? Um, yes, it is uh, difficult because there is a, um, a brainwashing by the mainstream media who are dominated by the leftists, and this was a policy um, uh, coming from uh, from the West, especially from uh, uh, from United States of America, and therefore uh, uh, this uh, this uh, Marxist uh, views um, are all over, and especially in uh, our educational system. So I'm guessing it's quite difficult for the Greek people to see something positive around about uh, right-wing organizations. Yes, it is uh, difficult. However, uh, the problems that are facing are making uh, you know to um, to think uh, again about it. But uh, uh, the, the the biggest problem I think uh, is the coming uh, generations, uh, because uh, uh, the majority of the teachers in the schools or in the universities um, are Marxists. Okay, that's well. That's not so good. Let's hope it might change in time. Uh, Right-wing organizations in Greece. What what do they think is uh, who who do they blame for the Greek economic crisis? They blame uh, everyone except uh, uh, the people who are responsible. I mean, uh, they, they blame. Uh, the people who are uh, who learned, you know, in consumption, or because the people uh, for a uh, big period of time they were taking loans, um, or the corruption of the government, or uh, the economics, uh, the economic policies that were followed uh, uh, by the governments. Um, but uh, the main problem, for, for from my point of view, is coming from the world bankers. So it is uh, uh, the whole system that creates uh, the debt. You see, even if it, even we, we didn't have uh, uh, corrupted uh, politicians, even if uh, 
uh, everything was uh, running normal, um, the debt uh, will will be created again. You know, it, this is this is coming from the system that creates by itself the the debt. Yeah, we see it's like design is controlled to keep putting countries in debt and debt until they own them in yes, the end. Yes, and this starts from the, the Central Bank of Greece, which is now uh, um, is under the Central European Bank, which is a private bank that belongs uh, to Rothschilds. And um, when you don't uh, control the issue of your own money, um, you cannot uh, have any form of control on, on your economy. So um, we are double in a double way, in a much worse uh, situation than uh, than a previous, let's say, uh, ten years. And do the Greek people understand what's going on, or do they have a different opinion about what really caused the crisis? I think uh, the, the majority of the people uh, they don't have a full understanding. Of course, uh, now they understand that something goes wrong because uh, the governments are bailing out uh, uh, the bankers and uh, not the people, but uh, they didn't have a full understanding of their reality. And what do right-wing organizations do to open people's eyes? Are they trying to show the true source of the problem? No, nobody. Nobody? Nobody. Uh, only um, um, nationalistic or national socialistic voices, but uh, who are out of the parliament are trying, you know, to uh, educate people. Um, but this is, uh, you know, in an in internal level or, or some uh, uh, speeches, speeches uh, here and there, in some uh, patriotic organizations or nationalistic autonomous organizations. But uh, let's say from uh, the big parties, political parties, uh, they do nothing. Okay, that's, that's a bummer, but let's hope we can change something in time. Uh, I hope so, uh, because uh, the situation, uh, I believe, that will is becoming much worse. And uh, this will force the people, you know, to, to search uh, about solutions. Well, see, the worst situations sometimes do open people's eyes. Like, for example, in Ukraine, we were mostly not exactly very patriotic here. But after Maidan, patriotism has just really grown. Um, there is another problem we have in Europe. It's quite a big rising problem. What do the Greeks think about the refugee crisis? With the current problem, we see what goes on in most of uh, wealthy uh, Western European countries. What, what, what do they see? What do they think about the refugee crisis? And uh, what solution do they see to this problem? Um, you know, uh, it depends. Uh, I believe that the majority of the Greek people um, the, uh, realize that there is a big problem with uh, all these uh, illegal immigrants uh, uh, or the current uh, refugee problem. Uh, however, um, some others say they, they, there are people, you know, who, who don't care because there's a big economic uh, crisis in Greece, so the majority of them, they want uh, to just pass through the Greece and to move in Central or in uh, Northern Europe. Um, there are other people who are suffering um, economically by the presence of uh, um, of the immigrants, uh, or other people who are suffering uh, from uh, the increase of criminality. So uh, about the solution, uh, you listen, you know, different solutions, but uh, are not uh, solutions of a long term solution. But Greek people in general, are they quite welcoming to the refugees like in Western European countries or are they seeing this as an evil? They see it as a, as a, as a big problem. Um, uh, they, they welcome them, uh, um, but in the way of, uh, of the rest of uh, Europe. Um, not, uh, let's say, a warm welcome, but uh, um, they, they, can do, they cannot do anything, you know. To, to, to prevent it. It's a matter, you know, for, of government de decisions to, to be taken. What about Greek right-wing organizations? What is their opinion about the refugee crisis? Who do they think is behind all this? Uh, they think that um, are uh, the problem of the wars. Uh, however, they, they, 
they don't uh, gain, they don't solve uh, who causes the, the problem. Um, uh, for example, uh, Golden Dawn, which is uh, at the immigration uh, political party, they, uh, they have done nothing, I mean nothing, uh, on the street, no demonstration, no an open um, gathering, you know, protest govern, uh, gathering or rally uh, about uh, this uh, immigration problem. So uh, they may write, you know, articles in a newspaper or in the internet or they have speeches inside the parliament, but there, there is no a, a real action in the society. So again, uh, uh, organizations, uh, patriotic organizations or people's organizations are protesting. For example, we had uh, yesterday in the square of uh, Victoria, um, a protest of uh, uh, the people who are living in the region that were suffering because of the big number of the refugees. And um, there was uh, the appearance also of the Antifa that were uh, against uh, uh, the local population. And there was no uh, presence at all of Golden Dawn. So this was just uh, right-wing organizations against uh, anti-fascists? I, I, yes, uh, actually right-wing or, or let's say with a wide uh, form of uh, patriotism because, uh, you know, uh, we must not uh, divide uh, the people in right or left-wing. Um, this is something that is created by the, the system itself. And uh, the people must be united if there is a common problem. Okay. Um, regarding right-wing parties, organizations, or let's just take overall right-wing radicals, uh, how many of them are actually sponsored by someone? And is, is Golden Dawn, like, is it, is it clean or are they right now just, they're, is, if I, as I have understood, they're in the pockets of the U.S., right? Uh, no, it is in the pocket of uh, Moscow. The Golden Dawn is in the pocket of Moscow. Okay, and what about the other right-wing organizations? What's, what's, uh, what's their support? Uh, just to, to, to tell you a few things uh, in order to be informed to your audience, your Ukrainian audience. Um, I will tell you just two examples, or three examples. The first uh, one is that... Uh, if a member of a Golden Dawn uh, openly states something positive about uh, uh, the conflict is taking place in Ukraine, uh, will be immediately uh, thrown out of the party. That is, if he supports Ukraine. Yes. Okay. The second is that uh, um, Mrs. Zarulia and Mr. Mathopoulos, who are uh, deputats, um, and uh, Mrs. Zarulia is the uh, wife of uh, Nikos Mihalolakos, who is the leader of uh, Golden Dawn. They have visited uh, 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 one year before uh, Moscow and they have a meeting with uh, Alexander Dukin. Yes, the radical. Uh, yes, we've been yes, all about this. You know, and you know the role of uh, of Ogin. Yes, but, uh, we are aware of that. Okay, but uh, I have to inform also and the rest of the audience that he yes, is sure. against of uh, um, the ethno state. He is against also of uh, of um, our racial uh, purity. Yeah. So. Uh, also, uh, they took uh, uh, they, par they participated in Golden Dawn with uh, the three um, uh, members that uh, has been in, uh, elected in the European Parliament of Golden Dawn in uh, in a forum that uh, in conservative forum that took place in uh, Saint Petersburg, and they uh, they voted with uh, the other participants a resolution that uh, they stated uh, officially that uh, Crimea was well done, annexated uh, by the Russian Federation. And uh, this is uh, something not acceptable uh, by me, but uh, also is not acceptable uh, by the healthy uh, Greek nationalists and uh, uh, national socialists. 
There is an interesting thing about the meeting of the so-called right-wing organizations in St. Petersburg. It's because in Russia they have banned most right-wing organizations and they are kind of anti-right-wing. But they have these meetings where they call other right-wing parties from other European countries, which kind yes, of makes it obvious that they are all bought by that's the... That's true, and, uh, and those who are participating from the Russian, uh, from the Russian side actually are... Uh, um, you know, parties are uh, controlled by FSB. Yes, that's true. What so, about what about the Greeks in general and the Greek right-wing uh, members? How, how, how do they think? Well, what's exactly going on in Ukraine? How do they portray the events happening in Ukraine? Um, you know, the, 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 the majority of uh, the media are pro-Russian. And um, this is happening because of there is a lack of uh, information in Greece. And uh, all the media are, um, are being formed uh, directly uh, uh, from Moscow. Okay, Not so only I'm this, that uh, when they want to make a report about Ukraine, they are making this report from Moscow. And this is, it is quite funny, but the, this is... Um, this is uh, the reality. And uh, the average uh, Greek men, uh, uh, the majority, are uh, uh, pro-Russian right now. I mean, so the so average So I'm guessing they're being brainwashed by the media that is pro-Russian and yes, they exactly. think Ukraine However, is However, I have to, to mention that uh, uh, there are uh, uh, Greek autonomous nationalists who have a very, uh, they have excellent uh, relationship with uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, diaspora uh, people who have participated in the first anniversary of uh, Maidan uh, that took place in um, in Athens. They have created also uh, a Hellenic uh, sh section of uh, Reconquista in Facebook and uh, there are also other uh, activities that are trying to inform the Greek population of the reality um, and uh, uh, the real, you know, data of what is going on in Ukraine. So, what what kind of myths do they have in Greece about Ukraine? Like, uh, what 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 what's going on exactly? Like, tell me some of the myths, and maybe we can. Okay, okay. Out some. Uh, the, uh, the basic myths are that uh, um, right sector and uh, Azov uh, regiment are are being so sponsored by uh, George Soros. No, that is not right. This is I one of the, this is one of the main uh, things of Russian propaganda. They work okay. so good. Also, everywhere. that uh, are been sponsored by um, by Kolomoski, who is a uh, uh, you know the um, well known. Uh, yeah, we know the billionaire in Ukraine. No, yes. which is also not right. This is in every Russian media. You will find. Uh, these kind of propaganda. Russia is excellent in terms of their media propaganda, yes. brainwashing as, people. As of uh, um, regiment is sponsored by Israel, by uh, Jewish uh, oligarchs. Uh, <laughs> that would be that would be funny for Azov to be sponsored by yes, Israel. <laughs> no, no. Also, that uh, members uh, there are members uh, in uh, Azov regiment who are not uh, white, that are Arabs. Um, they are. Um, uh, uh, Jews, you know, Muslims, and things like that. Yeah, we have we have heard of such rumors, but we can tell you for sure that there are no Arabs, no Jews, no Muslims, no Chechens. There is nobody in Azov. There yes. was a there was a Chechen battalion fighting for the Ukraine side, but Azov has no connection to any anyone who is non-white. I do know it, uh, but uh, it is uh, nice to hear from you because. Uh, there is so much uh, brainwashing in, in Greece uh, by the mainstream media. And um, there are also uh, another form of uh, um, uh, accusations about uh, um, Azov, that uh, they are, uh, um, you know, supporting uh, uh, European Union and uh, NATO, and uh, even that uh, um, uh, in Azov battalion are, are participating uh, uh, American uh, contractors, you know, of the American army. This is again one of the propagandas. Uh, you know, Azov does not uh, support Ukraine to become a member of EU or NATO because we know what will happen once we go into EU. And yes. uh, about the uh, propaganda of uh, American professional fighters in our battalion, we have nobody who is fighting with us for money. 
There are no mercenaries, no contractors, nobody. Our battalion is entirely volunteers. Anybody can, if from Ukraine, if they want to fight, they can just go and fight. And yes, all of excellent. them fight voluntarily. Yes, and uh, I, I want to, I, now that I have the opportunity to our Greek uh, audience, uh, I want to say that uh, whoever wants uh, to go and fight at the side of our brothers in Ukraine, uh, there are open doors. It's kind of difficult to say open doors, but... I, yes, but they are welcome. <laughs> this oh, yes, I might, we might say from that point of view. Yes, because uh, uh, there's a screening of uh, the kind of people who are uh, coming in touch in, in Azov uh, Regiment. And um, this is something that uh, it is normal and has to be done. Uh, so, what, what what do the uh, Greek people what what do they see usually on the media about uh, Ukraine? What what is it like? Do they like does Ukraine uh, does uh, Greek media speak about Ukrainian right wing organizations? Uh, they they mostly speak about uh, uh, right sector or Azov, and uh, they are labeled. There's a label, you know. Um, the so-called uh, uh, Nazis, they also uh, say that uh, Parashenko is, uh, has formed an illegal Nazi uh, government, or no Nazi government, uh, that of course is... Parashenko and his government, they're just, uh, they're totally not what Ukraine needs, and everybody in Ukraine, all the people, they hate them. Y yes. It is, it is just a matter of time until they go away, and yes. it will be there soon. And, uh, and um, uh, I'm glad that uh, you're pointing out this because uh, there is also uh, the wrong idea that uh, Azov uh, uh, regiment or the nationalists, uh, Ukrainian nationalists, are supporting uh, uh, Poroshenko but, uh, and the current government of uh, Ukraine, but this is not true. No, it's not true. Azov or right sector do not support Poroshenko and do not support the current government. It's uh, one of the, again, one of the lies, fro lies from the anti-Azov, anti-right sector propaganda that you might find online. Yes, yes. And uh, it is a, is a propaganda in, in Greece that is reproduced uh, um, through the media or through internet. And um, uh, there's a big activity also from the Russian uh, embassy. And um, there was a debate that uh, I, took, I participated uh, about it. And um, it was quite interesting that immediately there was a response by the Russian uh, embassy. Uh, they are uh, quite active and I can say um, well experienced on this field, but they took uh, the right answers. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I believe that, uh, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, Ukrainian uh, diplomacy um, must start to become more active. Mm, yeah, well, that's that's true. They should. Uh, what what other things do people who are uh, aware of uh, Ukrainian right wing movements what what do they think about them? Like, are there some other myths going on in Greece about us? Um, there is also uh, myths that are spreading around the uh, uh, internet that um, uh, the nationalistic volunteers uh, battalions are committed uh, uh, war crimes? Uh, no. Um, well, war, war crimes, it's a thing. Uh, these videos there, you can, you can very easily make these videos at home. Just, you, just yes, have to dr you, can, you can just dress up as a Ukrainian soldier, wear a patch, make a video and upload. The yes. internet is filled with dozens of videos of these so-called war crimes. But if you actually look at them really closely and if you know the battalions very well, you will see that this is, this is it's a clear fake. Yes. Um, um, because there, there were, uh, from time to time, there, is, uh, there are some videos, of course, uh, 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 are videos who, who can understand that uh, are made up and uh, they are not uh, uh, from actual reality. Yes, uh, that's true. However, I, I, I know that uh, there were committed war crimes from uh, the side uh, of uh, separatists uh, or from, uh, let's say, of the Russian uh, troops. 
Well, they, they commit their war crimes and they might be even that stupid to start uploading it online or uh, upload on uh, the Russian so social networking platform called the Verkampakte. You will find a lot of evidence that there is Russian troops and Russian artillery military in Ukraine. Yes. Um, Another yeah, thing is that uh, there is no, um, uh, uh, you know, Russian army at all inside uh, Ukraine. There are only separatists or, let's say, volunteers who are helping uh, the separatists. Yeah, the Russian media likes to push the idea that there are no Russian troops in Ukraine. They always say that this is just volunteers, Russian volunteers and separatists. But that doesn't change the fact that they are there and there is proof online. You can yes, find so much of proof. proof also, uh, not only from uh, that there are uh, Russian uh, troops, but uh, as also Russian contractors who are participating. Yes, yes. Ukrainian uh, army has also caught a lot of uh, Russian tech and weapons that there is no way it could have entered Ukrainian territory unless Russia themselves sent. Mm -hmm. And not to forget about the soldiers also that the Ukrainian army has caught. We have caught a lot of Russian-speaking soldiers with Russian passports who were at that time serving in the Russian army. The surprising thing is when we show this proof, the Russian government immediately denies that they were current uh, so, uh, soldiers. They said that they just left and they went voluntarily. Yes. So this this already shows one one big proof that we have that it's it's Russia that's doing the biggest problem in Ukraine right now. Yes, yes, that's true. And also there is no information in the Greek media about uh, uh, the Russian looting of uh, Ukrainian factories in eastern Ukraine. The Russian looting? Uh, yes, uh, where Russians are taking um, um, actually the installations of uh, Ukrainian uh, factories. Uh, yes, there has been a lot of looting in the uh, war area. Ever since the uh, pro-Russians have started their this thing, what they have started, there is constant reports of looting from civilian homes, from factories, and anything you can go and know, they're just looting everything. Even the people in Donetsk, in Donetsk Oblast, they have been complaining about the looting problem. They were first, many of them were pro-Russian, but right now after seeing what's going on, right now after seeing how Russia has betrayed them, the very Russia that they wanted to come, those idiots, now they see that it's not worth it after all the looting, killing. Yes. Uh, also, uh, I have uh, uh, the information that uh, um, there is also a form of... Uh, human safari against uh, Ukrainian people by a Russian, uh, you know, um, uh, by a private uh, Russian uh, military organization. Yeah, well, they like to have some fun also, it looks, looks like that. They will, they will do anything to make some money. They've been doing it and uh, you can always find different kind of Russians from different parts of Russia. And uh, Russian supporters also, there is some Russian supporters from some European countries also. They just come there for fun. For them, this war looks like a fun, fun ground. That they can come there and just play, shoot some weapons. Because they'll be allowed to do so. There is nobody governing, governing them. Yes, yes. Uh, that is uh, actually not uh, government control. So, so every, everyone can do almost everything there. One of the biggest proofs we can find that how they, stupid they are, what they do, is how they shot down MH17. They were, they were actually so stupid that they were just having fun. They thought they saw a Ukrainian plane and they shot down MH17. Mm -hmm. Which just shows they are there just for fun. They just shoot and want to kill anything. Um, and and not, not to forget the brainwashing of Russian media of how to hate Ukrainians. Yes, but, uh, but uh, there is an extra problem in the, the eastern part of Ukraine right now. I mean the, the regions that are controlled by the so-called uh, separatists. Uh, where they started to bring also the small children in the schools to hate, uh, to really hate the Ukrainian people. Yes, we are aware of it. Uh, the and internet uh, is also they, they, they raised up uh, photos of uh, Joseph Stalin uh, publicly. And um, this uh, also, you can see uh, that uh, they are uh, pro-Soviet, uh, these people, uh, not only that uh, they are controlled by Moscow, but are also pro-Soviet. Yes, that's true. In eastern Ukraine, there is right now a major brainwashing going on of uh, pro-Soviet ideology. Uh, young children are being brainwashed. They are being brainwashed from really young age to hate Ukrainians. And uh, there's tons of videos and photos of online of how these 
small kids who don't understand LB are being brainwashed to hate Ukrainians. They create these scenarios of them dressed up in Ukrainian costumes, uh, camouflage, the other dressed up in the DNR camouflage, and they're shooting the Ukrainians, executing them. These are small kids doing this. Imagine what they will do when they grow up. Yes, yes. And also there is a propaganda in Greece that uh, the average you know, Ukrainian people uh, uh, hate uh, 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 the, the Russian uh, 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 Slavs people. Slavonic people. But uh, this is not true uh, because um, Ukrainian people are against um, the imperialism of Kremlin. That's, uh, yes, that, that is one of the brainwashings that's been told in uh, the leftist media and the Kremlin-controlled media. It's that Ukrainian yes. people hate Russians, which, yes. which, which, for, me, which for me is kind of really stupid because Ukrainian army, we have... Most, there's everybody speak, Russian speaking, yes, right? Yes. This so-called, they say, fascist right sector. There's so many Russian speaking. Azov battalion is practically almost a Russian speaking battalion. Yes, I know it. How, are, how can they say that uh, Ukrainians are anti-Slavic hating when Ukrainians themselves are Slavics? Yes. This is, just, this is the typical brainwashing you'll find online of uh, how to mis mis make people misunderstand. That's right. And moreover... There is this uh, this propaganda that uh, if you speak Russian in uh, Ukraine, uh, you are in a, a very big uh, uh, danger by the Ukrainian people. But uh, uh, actually, if you go in Kiev, most of the people in the streets are speaking Russian. Yes, exactly uh, what I've been telling you. Uh, yes. So uh, this is uh, another myth uh, that uh, exists in, in the Greek media. And not only in the Greek media, I mean in the Western uh, uh, media. Yeah, even the Russian media says on Russian TV that how Russian-speaking people are being crucified by Ukrainians, which is a very big lie. Even if you go to the most west part of Ukraine and you speak Russian, and nobody's going to mind anything until you, unless, of course, you start speaking, yes, yes, Russia, Putin. Then they will obviously get pissed off. Yeah, yes, of course. Yes. It's, uh, this, this, is, this is one of the biggest lies of Russian media and leftist media. Is that if you speak in Russian, you will get killed. It's, it's, uh, it's just really funny. Yes, yes, it is really funny if you have an experience, if you have lived in Ukraine, it is really funny, but the people that have no idea um, actually believe it. It's no, but this is all lies. If Ukraine was really anti-Russian, we wouldn't have Ukrainian TV where half the shows are in Russian and yes. news, some of the news are in Russian, people speak in Russian everywhere. It's not like they hate Russians, they don't hate Russians, they just hate these so-called Putin supporters. And it doesn't matter if you're a Ukrainian Putin supporter or a Russian Putin supporter. You will yes. get hate. And, uh, you know, for me, uh, Putin is not... Uh, I don't consider him as a Russian. Uh, 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 for, for me, he is, an, uh, is a businessman, an oligarch. Uh, and he is uh, of uh, Jewish uh, roots. Uh, a man who has been appointed by the world bankers. Uh, to do his uh, their job, and actually, um, uh, even Russian Federation is uh, under um, occupation, occupation uh, by the bankers, because the central bank of uh, of uh, Russia is not controlled by the Russian government; is a private uh, bank, which is uh, just a department of uh, the Bank of England that belongs to Rothschilds. So you see, uh, Rothschilds uh, are cooperating with Putin uh, to all this uh, aggression. Mm, yeah, but uh, many Russians don't understand this. They think Putin is the savior of Russia and savior of everything that's uh, wholly Russian. Yes, they don't. They don't. They don't actually see that since Putin has come into Russia, uh, Russia has just gone down the drain. The so-called Putin's propaganda of great Russian military—it's uh, most of it are lies. If you look at the Russian military, you'll hardly see anything new come out in the recent years. Okay, if they really make a new tank or a new plane, it's going to be top on the list for one year, half year maximum until the Americans release one. And uh, then the Russians will again have to work 20 years on a newer version. However, it is a big power. And um, uh, they, they have, if, if you exclude, you know, the big cities like uh, Moscow or St. Petersburg, um, uh, the, the majority of the population uh, actually are suffering. Uh, they don't have a, a high economical uh, social status. 
Yes, that's true. The majority of the population in Russia, they are suffering. Let's take, for example, the... I, I can say it, they, they are even much worse than that. The average Ukrainian people. Yes, that's true. That's true. If you compare, let's say, Siberia, which is supposed to be Russia's most richest region, they have the largest stockpile of diamonds, oil, gas, everything they have there. If you go to a small Siberian village, the, the richest part of Russia, and you look how they live, it is pretty pathetic. Yes, these are things that will never be shown on Russian television. And these are things that will never be shown on any television around the world. Of course, yes. the Russian television glamorizes St. Petersburg and Moscow, like as if these two are the only cities in Russia, but it's just worth it to go, let's say, 30 kilometers outside of Moscow and look exactly how people live. But and despite, actually, despite actually, the fact all the... of how they live, they are, there's many of them, so many of them brainwashed. Yes. And the people who are not brainwashed, they're really afraid to say something. Mm -hmm. and it's, I it's, it's impossible for a Russian right-wing uh, member to say something because he will either be jailed or he'll be killed. Yes, there is no freedom. And I just wanted to, to mention that uh, uh, historically, um, uh, the majority uh, actually that uh, of the people, of the population who lives uh, right now in Siberia are from Ukraine. And uh, uh, if you go, as you said, a few kilometers outside of Moscow, most of the villages are being occupied by uh, immigrants. Yeah, Mos uh, the recent statistics of uh, Moscow's population has shown that only 33% of Moscow's uh, population are Russians. The remaining are all immigrants, and it's uh, mixed with uh, all kind of from uh, the Caucasus and Georgia and uh, Armenia and uh, everything you from, from Azerbaijan and Chechnya, there is yeah, a shit ton of immigrants in there. From, uh, yes, yes. It's even come to such a problem that people in Russia make fun. They call Moscow Moskvabad and they call St. Petersburg Peterstan. Yes. And uh, don't forget that uh, uh, just uh, one week before uh, it was established uh, uh, the biggest uh, mosque um, of the world in, in the... Yes, yes. The, big, the, the biggest mosque, I think, in this part of Europe was established in Moscow and Putin himself personally went and visited this mosque. Which uh, which should be obvious? Is he pro-Russian or is he just pro for? Is he living for the Russian people or not? This stance of his makes it obvious who actually he supports. And uh, um, now you give me the chance um, to say one more myth that uh, exists in the uh, Greek media uh, that uh, if you are you know a Christian Orthodox in Ukraine somehow uh, you are under attack. Christian Orthodox under attack in Ukraine. Uh, this is <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, and especially if you um, if you are a Christian Orthodox uh, that uh, um, uh, let's say you follow a church which is connected to the Russian uh, patriarchy, but uh, this is also is not true. No, it's, it's this is just uh, it's just again one of the myths, the lies. It's uh, nothing like that. People, of course, people are aware that. Uh, Religion itself is, people know what it's all, but uh, it's, I, will, I won't say that you're under threat if you are Orthodox Christian. It's, this is just, these are just typical lies. Yes, yes, I do know. And, um, and another one myth uh, was that uh, during the Maidan, uh, uh, let's say, rebellion, I don't say it uh, as a revolution, because, uh, you know, uh, the word revolution creates uh, a legal term. Yeah. And you make a revolution on a, on a, a, a legal government. But uh, I do believe that uh, um, Ukraine is under occupation. Ukraine is not a free, independent uh, uh, country. So uh, you, don't have, you don't face uh, a legal uh, government. You have a, a national rebellion against uh, an, occup an occupation government. So... Uh, during the rebellion, they were telling that uh, uh, the organizations who are participating in the right uh, sector, they were paid uh, by the Americans or by the European Union, you know, the members, um, to, to take part in this uh, rebellion. No, that's not true. That's, that's, I, I watch Russian television. I know as soon as Maidan started, the, the first, first news was like CIA paid, right sector are killing members, Russian speakers in Kyiv. It's ridiculous. If the West sponsored CIA, 
why is it uh, if the West uh, sponsored uh, right sector and CIA, why is it right now right sector members are being told to put down their weapons? Uh, why is it right sector has still not been incorporated into the Ukrainian uh, military? For this. Yeah. yeah, this is, this yeah. is if, if, if they were really sponsored by CIA or the West, they'd be right now in the Ukrainian uh, military and they would be given even more weapons. Yes, yes. Um, this is uh, this is uh, true. However, we have to say uh, um, uh, it is what I believe that um, uh, this Maidan story uh, has uh, has started. Uh, um, you know, the people who have uh, initially initiated uh, this story, uh, they were agents of uh, actually of the uh, of um, uh, U.S. and uh, European Union. Uh, however, through the course, uh, this, uh, the, let's say, pro-European Union um, uh, movement started to become a, a national uh, uh, anti-Yanukovych movement. And uh, that was uh, the, the moment that uh, actually um, the right sector made the, the difference and uh, a great historical uh, step that... Uh, Changed uh, the the real course of the history. The uh, media can can say actually, a lot of things, but yes. uh, one thing is true that uh, well, let's say if Maidan was sponsored by the West, so how much how much can they sponsor? A couple of thousand. But if you look at how many people actually came out on Maidan, it was not no, a couple uh, of thousand. Uh, it was uh, when they say uh, when I say sponsored is not uh, sponsored. Uh, um, uh, let's say. Um, uh, the people, but uh, you know, the people who who are um, who are the leaders, you know, of the uh, leaders, the leaders, the one stuff. about and, for I, example, and, uh, the, the uh, political parties that uh, initially uh, took part in this uh, story, uh, the main three opposition parties. Yeah, about uh, the main three opposition parties, of course, it's not, not, not much we can say. We know that some there's something not clean. We, we can see that seeing the way they support right now, what they're doing in the country. Yes. You can see that their intentions are not clear. Yes. Uh, instead, of, instead of creating an open, free country without any oligarchy, we still have, we still have oligarchy everywhere. Parashanko is the president. He's a billionaire. What has he changed till now? You cannot and, and, and expect. We don't, a, and we don't change, support you know. them. We don't support Poroshenko or Svoboda. Yes, and uh, also there is a, a myth about uh, Svoboda. Uh, people, uh, uh, it uh, let's say there is um, there is a mixture uh, uh, because uh, there is no clear understanding. There is a confusion, a mental confusion. They confuse uh, Svoboda with the uh, right sector or or with um, Azov. Uh, Regiment. Um, it's easy. It's maybe it's a bit possible to confuse. Swaboda actually started together with uh, Andrei Biletsky's party. They were like actually once one once upon a time. But yes, Swaboda abandoned past. abandoned its uh, original intentions. They're right now. You can say they're liberals. We 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 have no connection to them right now. We just changed. We just divided. Yes. There might you might say that there was connections back in the past, but these people just uh, abandoned and betrayed the ideology. They just went for the money. Yes, and this is the reason that uh, they lost the majority of their youth. Yeah. So I'm glad that uh, I'm listening it, uh, from you because uh, the Greek listeners have to be informed about this uh, issue. I'm also glad that we can uh, open the eyes of some of the people who are reading the wrong information. It would be nice for them to know a bit, a bit of the truth. And uh, uh, another one I wanted to, to state about uh, Crimea, because in Greece they say, oh, um, Russian Federation, well done, and uh, uh, I'm excited uh, from uh, Ukraine, this uh, origin, because historically it uh, belongs to Russians. <laughs> Yeah, they, they say a lot of stuff about Crimea being historically belonging to Russians. The Russians before have tried many times to get Crimea, four times to be precise. The idea of and, Russian uh, Crimea, know, it's, it's a myth. You know, my, my, answer, my answer, my personal answer to this myth uh, uh, what is, is uh, Crimea was, uh, was a place that uh, in the past, uh, the very first uh, people who lived there were the Greeks.
the ancient yeah. the 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 Byzantine and, uh, Empire they own Crimea for more than six fifty years. If somebody actually, if in current world this is possible, Greek should Greece should get it. But uh, this is this is not and, the ideology. And and, uh, and uh, actually, uh, um, uh, one was uh, was taken by uh, Catherine the Great that uh, the Russians, uh, so called the Russians, but they were not uh, actually Russians, um, took uh, uh, Crimea. Uh, the, the, the first uh, address to the local population were in, in it was in Greek language. So um, uh, and uh, cause of the Greek uh, idea that uh, we are not imperialists, you know, like the Russians, uh, not the Russians, but uh, uh, like uh, uh, the policy of uh, Kremlin. Yeah. Uh, that uh, uh, actually I don't see any difference from. Uh, the policy of uh, White House, White House and, and Kremlin, for me, is the one and they're, the same. They're all the same. They're imperialists. They only yes, care about exactly. gaining power. Uh, and uh, uh, therefore, uh, always uh, the, the Greek population lived in, in peace uh, with uh, with the Slavonic people there, and ne never created uh, any kind of problem. And uh, there was a population that. Uh, um, uh, they suffered uh, under uh, Stalin's regime that were expelled from uh, uh, their places and um, the majority never uh, came back uh, like uh, the Tatars who, who uh, managed uh, somehow to, to return back. So uh, um, Crimea uh, belongs uh, to Ukraine and uh, actually there is no uh, uh, Jewish unification. Uh, uh, there is no legal uh, um, uh, background for the Russians uh, to take uh, Crimea. There it's is no legal. There is nothing. It's, but it's uh, illegal. Putin could so easily take Crimea. It's because he's been brainwashing the people that Crimea has and always has been Russian, which it just cannot be the truth. Let's say like in 1897 in Crimea, there lived a much larger population of Ukrainians. They were the majority in Crimea. After this started, the you know Ukrainians were forced to leave. Russians were coming and taking over. And this so-called myth saying that uh, Sevastopol, which is a city in Crimea, it's, the, it's a, a city of Russian glory. It's also the biggest myth. The R Russians are being fed this that Sevastopol is a city of Russian glory, whereas during the Crimean War, 80% of the uh, people fighting uh, during the Crimean War were Ukrainians. There is enough and, proof and, that you uh, can go to a museum. And we have to say that uh, in, in uh, 1919, uh, in the uh, uh, so-called uh, Crimea War, um, the Greeks also uh, fought uh, side by side with the Ukrainian people. Yeah. Uh, this is also a historical fact. It's, it's a historical fact that the 70% of the so-called, what they say were all Russians, they were all Ukrainians. And there, if anybody ever needs the proof, you can just visit the museums in Crimea, which let's hope are still there, where there's photos of these so-called people who fought. And you can check that they are all ethical Ukrainians with Ukrainian names and surnames. Even the streets in Sevastopol are named after these Ukrainian heroes. You will see Ukrainian names and surnames on these streets. So the Russian media, the, the, when they say that uh, Sevastopol is a city of Russian glory, it's just uh, pure bullshit. And also the myth about Khrushchev giving away Crimea uh, to Ukraine when he was, they say it was a drunk deal. It's also, it's, uh, it's really wrong because official documents say it was written by Varashilov. It was written before Khrushchev gave it and in the documents it was written that Crimea is going back to Ukraine after the Soviet Union took it away. Because it has closer ties to Ukraine, it can have a, have one economy. It it has close agricultural ties to Crimea and Ukraine. They're all the same. Yes. When when the uh, Russian Empire and the Soviet Union had Crimea under their control, nothing was ever done for Crimea. It was abandoned. Mm -hmm. When the Ukrainian uh, re, when the Soviet Ukraine got back Crimea, they made out of a big wasteland. They made everything. Agriculture was started again. It was a booming economy. Yes, and I believe that uh, um, Russians they wanted to to get uh, uh, a Kremlin, not the Russians. A Kremlin wanted to, and Putin to to get uh, uh, the the control of uh, Crimea for geostrategical uh, reasons, cause of the role uh, of the resources, 
because there is much uh, gas. And yes, here, also they also wanted to keep it because they could not lose the naval base of the Black Sea. Yes, Sea-Sea. yes, this is the inside the geostrategical uh, reasons that I told you, and uh, also is a, is a, a, a region uh, which is. Uh, uh, has a big uh, land uh, fertility and has an uh, excellent uh, climate. And so, yes. Uh, um, yes. this but is a, a as, as the past too. has shown, the, the future will also show that they are not going to do anything for Crimea. And in the end, the very people who were out there demonstrating and asking for pro Russia, they will be crying and they will want to go back in the end. And I want to also to, uh, to mention uh, another historical fact. There is a, a, a land, uh, not a, a land, uh, an island in the Black Sea. Uh, it is called in English uh, separate uh, island. Um, uh, in uh, ancient Greek uh, language, it is called uh, Ophiusa. Okay. And this, uh, this island is quite interesting story because uh, during uh, the, when was uh, Yusenko president of Ukraine, uh, Romania uh, wanted to get this uh, uh, to get the control of this island. Okay. And uh, uh, the traitor uh, Yusenko said, "Let's go to the international court about it. Do not have a conflict about this island." And the international court got the decision because. Uh, uh, Ukraine is uh, controls all the the sea and, uh, and the very very small islands that exist in the in the Black uh, Sea uh, close to the coast of uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, this island must pass uh, to the Romanian uh, uh, authorities, and uh, uh, Romania wanted to control this island because this island. Uh, underneath this island, there is a, a huge um, uh, oil uh, resources. And finally, I said that uh, whenever Romania decides, uh, you know, to get out of uh, this uh, oil, uh, Ukraine will take ten uh, percent of it. But uh, this was the first sign that uh, uh, they started, you know, to sell out the Ukrainian uh, uh, land. And um, and this is a pity. And uh, if come in the power, a true Ukrainian government has to take back the control of this island. Of course, they can try to take back. But the main question is who is going to allow it? The thing is, after the fall of USSR, all the governments in Ukraine have been systematically... They were making Ukraine ready like for this exact moment when Russia would come and try to take over. The Ukrainian army was abandoned. It was left to rust. All its uh, equipment was just left to rust. Ukraine, after the fall of the Soviet Union, was the country with the third largest number of nukes in the world. America and Russia had a deal that Ukraine will pass on all, uh, all, all its nukes in exchange for uh, security and the integrity of the country. But now you can see in this current situation that they have both abandoned us and they have betrayed us after taking away the nukes. It's, yes. it's visible that this all was done purposely to destabilize Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my personal uh, uh, opinion about uh, a permanent future solution for Ukraine uh, is uh, uh, Ukraine to, to adapt uh, the constitution of Switzerland. The constitution of Switzerland. So that's, yes. that's for you a personal, like, what you think would be right, correct? Yes, because... Uh, in the past, this this constitution was uh, was was made uh, by a, a Greek man who who was also govern, uh, governor the first governor of uh, Greece uh, after our liberation from the Turkish uh, occupation. His name was Ioannis uh, Kapodistrias, uh, Kapodistrias, his last name, and uh, he was appointed uh, by the Russian Tsar. Um, to save uh, Switzerland, because Switzerland was uh, divided, how it is today, uh, Ukraine, and uh, in different uh, regions called uh, Cardons, where they had uh, actually uh, military conflicts in between them. 
and they were speaking three different languages. Uh, also speak today three different languages. Yes, that's, that's true. I Italian, French, and German. The majority is uh, actually the majority of the population speak German. Um, and uh, he went there, and uh, after um, uh, almost uh, one and a half year, having uh, dialogues with all sides, he uh, uh, succeeded to, uh, to unite 19 different regions. Today are 22 cantons. That period of time we were 19 regions, uh, 19 cantons. And he established uh, this uh, uh, constitution that one basic you know, principle of this con constitution was that this country will be always neutral. Will not take the, the side, let's say, if we take, uh, for example, uh, uh, the example in Ukraine, will not take uh, the side of uh, Russia, not the side of uh, USA, not the side of uh, European Union or the side, of, let's say, of, of China or whatever. We've been neutral. At the same time, gave a... Uh, um, uh, much um, uh, power to the people in a sense of uh, ancient Hellenic way, not uh, uh, in the sense of a uh, parliamentary modern way. You understand it? Yes, I understand. Okay, let's say if you so, was so, to... so, so, uh, uh, this um, was the key factor that uh, united this, uh, this nation that was uh, ready to split, and for uh, geostrategical uh, reasons. Uh, um, Russian uh, uh, government didn't want it to split this nation because uh, it was going to be taken a part of, uh, from um, uh, Austro-Hungary, another part from Italy, another part from France, another part from Germany and so on. So uh, they kept uh, the unity and uh, they still exist as a united nation. And uh, as a, a prosperous, okay, with prosper prosperity, but uh, this is uh, another story, the, the prosperity, the, why they have uh, prosperity, economical prosperity. So this is, this is uh, what I believe. Could be a good idea. It has its plus and minuses. Of saying to be neutral could be a plus, but let's say if Ukraine was neutral to any side and tomorrow one of its brother countries had a problem where the problem would be the exact same as Ukrainians. So Ukrainians should just okay. sit and watch in this, this happen. In this case, in this case uh, um, what I believe, uh, the state as a state uh, remains neutral and um, you can uh, uh, support it through uh, um, volunteers with uh, um, non-government organizations controlled by you, you can you can support it with one thousand ways. Oh well, yes, know. that that could be true. That could be a solution. Yeah, that is true. For yeah. example, if if there is a, is a problem of uh, um, a neighbor country uh, and uh, brothers, um, white brothers won't help. You can do it uh, if you are if you are in the, if you control the authority with. Too many different ways, but yes. it was not uh, directly, yes. was not officially. Okay, we have a question from the audience, after which we should go to my last question to you and we can end this show. The question from the audience is, uh, what do you say about these, uh, in a couple of days ago in Odessa, we had some Greek leftists who were supporting the rebels. What, wh who are they? What do you say about this? Uh, there were two members of uh, the government, of the Greek government, and they were some uh, um, hardcore uh, Antifa members. Okay. That are uh, actually um, are very, you know, hostile to our ideas. And uh, uh, in case they uh, took quite big uh, publicity, this, uh, this matter especially in the internet, that uh, accused uh, members of the right sector that uh, actually um, uh, they, they not just blocked them, but physically attacked to, to them. But uh, this was not a reality. 
So there was also, again, a false propaganda. The uh, usual story. Yes, but uh, the, the, the current government of, of Greece is uh, a, a pro-Russian uh, government and, uh, uh, and uh, anti-fascist uh, government. Okay, and also, so... I, uh, um, I want to, to say that uh, Golden Dawn also, uh, uh, the Golden Dawn of, to, of today, uh, is an, uh, it became an anti-fascist organization. Okay. So, so in, in their argument, in a in a in a debate, in a me media stream or a mainstream uh, TV station, uh, a deputy a member of uh, Golden Dawn, which is called uh, Panayotaro, said, uh, "If we were Nazis, we are going to 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 support you know uh, the the Nazis of uh, Azov for for right, right sector in Ukraine, but." We are with uh, the separatists because uh, we don't believe in fascism. So this is uh, uh, the kind of uh, golden dawn today that has no idea, has not, no relationship with uh, our ideas. At the same time, uh, they are turning against uh, our Ukrainian uh, white brothers and sisters. Uh, this is very good that our international listeners can listen to this information. People who don't know what is Golden Dawn or don't have any idea about and, uh, uh, actually the, they are supporting uh, separatists who are uh, um, openly uh, Marxists. They are supporting um, uh, the ex-Soviet uh, regime. You know they are yes. dreamers of the Soviet Union, and at the same time th there are people who are um, directly. Uh, sponsored and controlled by the corrupted imperialistic Zionist Kremlin. It's very good that our listeners can listen to all this. It's, uh, I thank you very much for uh, providing us with this information. Well, my final question to you, Aris, uh, what do you think are the plans for the future for Greek right-wing organizations and for you or your supporters? What do you think you can change in Greece for the future? Or is there any chance to change something? There was, uh, there was always there is a chance, and uh, we have to fight uh, because uh, the situation is becoming uh, much worse, not only economically but uh, uh, the the demographic change in Europe uh, is dramatic, and uh, we are facing uh, uh, we, we are facing the problem of. Uh, the survival of our folk. So, um, what I believe in Greece has to be done. Our comrades, uh, whatever their ideas, if it is a national revolution, and is, if they are uh, uh, just uh, a nationalist or a national socialist, uh, to create uh, organizations and uh, to be united and uh, to cooperate uh, facing the, the common problems, uh, the common enemy. Something that is, it is not to be done by the Golden Dawn because the Golden Dawn has the dogma that whoever is not a member of uh, my organization is my enemy. And this is a, a, a Bolshevik a Zionist mentality of uh, divide and conquer. But we, I, and uh, not only I, but um, all healthy Greek nationalists do believe in unity. For example, Azov and the right sector maybe have some uh, different point of views from ideological, you know, uh, matters. But uh, uh, they are cooperating, and they have to be uh, uh, together, facing the enemy or facing uh, the problems that are everywhere in Ukraine. The same is in Greece. Yes, we have to true. be united and cooperate uh, each other, all organizations, no matter if it is one a bigger, uh, you know, political organization or, or a cultural organization or an athletic organization or, or a, um, a labor union or a political party. We have to be all together. Yes. United as a fist. <coughs> I and hope in uh, this spirit and in, the, in this spirit, 
we are uh, united with uh, uh, our Ukrainian comrades. Uh, we support uh, the 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 right uh, fight for uh, Ukraine for uh, liberation and uh, freedom in Eastern. Were we, uh, were we in your, in uh, your Ukraine, place, we would do the same. So and so we fight for an uh, in integral, uh, united Ukraine. Because, uh, you know, uh, the world uh, rulers, they dislike uh, united uh, countries. They dislike uh, Ukraine as a big country. They wanted uh, Ukraine in pieces. So it is our task to fight and keep our nations united and strong and healthy. True. Uh, let us hope in the future we can gain more supporters and we can have a big brotherhood where we can support our white brothers in case we always have any problems or something. Um, our time has come to an end okay. now. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much for the interview. I hope we can talk, talk again some next time and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, me too. And uh, there are, you know, many issues to cover. And... Uh, and... Uh, uh, I my message to our uh, Ukrainian comrades is keep on fighting. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I would like to remind uh, all our listeners that you've been listening to Azov Internet Radio, and today we have had Eris, the autonomous right-wing activist from Greece. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will meet with our listeners soon enough next You're time. Welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye.